Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to have with me right now is the head of visit Iceland, Sika. Good afternoon, Sika. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. How are you? Excellent, not too bad. Um, now, COVID's a thing of the past. We don't concern ourselves with it anymore. Travel wise, everything, all the borders are open. But have your international tourism levels returned to where they were before COVID? So this year, Iceland is one of the countries that is rebounding fastest. We are not completely to 2019 levels, but we're looking at around 85% for this year. And next year, we will look at something similar or slightly above. And in terms of tourism, do you find it in your job as Visit Iceland? Uh, you probably, like everybody else, had borders closed. You had a period, you know, a fallow period in terms of tourism. But has that perversely helped you in terms of seeking more marketing funds or seeking legislation changes with the government because people are aware of not only the economic impact of tourism but also the social impact of tourism. So uh, we were relatively lucky in Iceland that uh, life was pretty normal throughout the pandemic. For example the schools they never completely closed down um, and uh, everybody got vaccinated really quickly and so we had so somewhat normal life. Of course we had to close the borders like everybody else but the government, they were quick to open when it was possible. So Iceland was one of the first countries to offer testing at the borders in June 2020, for example. Iceland was the first European country to open up to US and UK visitors in April, or vaccinated visitors. So that helped tourism a lot. Um, part of uh, government measures to support tourism, because tourism is a very important industry in Iceland, was to increase funding to marketing. So we actually got increased funding for marketing in the beginning of the pandemic, so we chose to market throughout the pandemic. I know some destinations decided not to do it, which is very understandable when people can travel. But we were uh, creating campaigns. We wanted to maintain the conversation with the visitors when they couldn't travel. So I would be top of mind when they could travel. So you stayed in the market even though people couldn't travel? But yes, we did. Front of, front of mind, etc., etc. That's very good. That was the idea. Now, Iceland obviously, well not obviously, but has a reputation for uh, following fairly rigid sustainability policies for obvious reasons. Is that still a, a quite a strong pillar of both tourism strategy but also government strategy? Yes, it definitely is. It's, a, it's the leading goal of our export strategy is to be, for Iceland to be leading sustainability in 2030. And this is just something that we have to do. Uh, we have very, we are known for our nature and the nature of Iceland is very fragile and we are very concerned that we want to leave Iceland to the next generations as it is. So we need to be very mindful of how we are building our industries so they are uh, not uh, damaging the nature. Sure. So, th so this is a very big thing, uh, both in policy but also in the mindset of Icelanders, I would say. Cool. And now, as far as, um, as, far as tourism is concerned, Iceland's gone through a period, pre-Covid I would say, you know, a strong growth, pretty, pretty rapid growth in the last 10, 15 years. Is there a limit, you think, you know, uh, have you got to, and will you be getting to sort of a, well, it's getting a bit, it's a bit tight for space. We don't have too much accommodation over tourism, et cetera, et cetera. Is that something, A, you're aware of? Secondly, you have a strategy for, and will Iceland therefore become a lower volume, higher value market? So it is true, Iceland grew really rapidly. In 2010, we had about 500 to 1,000 visitors, and in 2018, we had 2 million visitors. So it was in the news that over tourism was connected to Iceland, but I think it was in some way unfounded. It was connected to the rapid growth. People are looking at, there are 370,000 Icelanders, 2 million visitors, they must be over flooded with visitors. But the fact is that Iceland is a vast country. It's 103,000 square kilometers. It's half of the UK. So we have abundance of space. Iceland is the least densely populated country in Europe. And Iceland, uh, it was, it put a strain on infrastructure in Iceland to have this rapid growth. But then we caught up and now we have infrastructure for visitors and we are growing at a more normal pace. But we're looking at that after the pandemic. We saw signs that we were uh, entering the normal growth pace, like the normal growth pace was in the world to tourism before the pandemic. But of course, then tourism permitted, but we are looking at uh, hopefully similar numbers uh, now. And does that, does that expansion and those numbers meet with universal approval by, by the citizens of Iceland? Or do you have some residents that think, you know, we want Iceland for Icelanders and we don't want all these people? It was. Uh, there were some 
negativity, especially when the growth was at its highest peak, around uh, 2017, 2018. And I think it was connected to the lack, the strain on infrastructure we had at that time. We have not had that uh, negativity in recent years towards tourism. And I think one of the uh, effects that the pandemic had was that we were forced to travel around our own country. Many Icelanders discovered how tourism has increased the quality of life in Iceland. Well, Iceland is a really nice destination now that many Icelanders didn't know before because we tend to travel abroad. So I think uh, people have more appreciation for tourism in Iceland now. And tourism has also increased quality of life throughout uh, Iceland because uh, tourists are helping us uh, create demand so we can have more restaurants, we can have better grocery stores in villages around the country. So I think uh, people know more of this uh, since the pandemic. So there's more positivity towards uh, tourism. And one of the future goals for tourism in Iceland is for over 90% of the population to be positive towards tourism. So this is something that's being factored into policy making. And a final question, brand Iceland, mm -hmm. in terms of international perception of what to expect when one comes on the holiday to Iceland. Are you happy with the brand? Iceland, and do you think it for, do you think it actually shows it off at its best? I'm happy with Brand Iceland. I've been working uh, for Brand Iceland for some years now, and I think uh, many people connect Brand Iceland to tourism, to destination, to nature. But we are so much more than that, and that's also what we're trying to do: is to tell more stories about the cuisine, Iceland emerging as a culinary destination, but also about our other export industries like creative industries, the fisheries. So this is all part of the brand Iceland saga. Good. Well, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.